Hi everybody, let's do IXL Algebra 2 S13, evaluate logarithms using properties. These are the properties we're going to need for this exercise. The product rule, which says, um, actually I'm going to read it uh, from right to left because that's how we're going to be using it in this exercise. So the log of A plus the log of B is equal to the log of A times B. The log of A minus the log of B is equal to the log of a divided by b and the log of uh, a to the well b times the log of a is equal to the log of a to the power of b okay so for this problem over here we're going to use the product rule i see that these two expressions are getting added together this is the same thing as the log base 3, just keep the base the same, of 9 times 3. That's using the power, uh, the product rule over here. Where they're getting added together, then we could multiply the A and the B. Okay, so 9 times 3. So we have the log base 3 of 27. So 3 to what power is equal to 27? That would be 3, because 3 to the third power is 27. 3 times 3 is 9, times another 3 is 27. Okay, and this this exercise is supposed to be uh, about practice using these rules over here, but of course for, for some of them you can do them a, a different way. So the log of 9 base 3 is 2, right? 3 to the second power is equal to 9, and then plus we have the log of 3 base 3 is 1. 3 to the first power is equal to 3. So this is just 2 plus 1, which is 3. And that's the same answer that we got this way. Okay. All right. For this one, we see the subtraction symbol here. We're going to use the quotient rule. The log of a minus the log of b is equal to the log of a divided by b. So this is equal to the log base 2 of 64 divided by 32. 64 divided by 32 is just 2. So we have the log of 2 and then still with the base of 2. Okay, so now we're just asking 2 to what power is equal to 2, and that's 1. Okay, and again, I'm not going to do this every th every single time, but for some of these, of these you can check them um, just by doing the log of this and the log of this, and then if it says subtraction, like it does for this example, just subtracting them. So over here, you could ask yourself 2 to what power is equal to 64? So let's see. If we keep multiplying by 2s, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, that's 6 and then 2 to what, and then minus, and then 2 to what power is equal to 32? Let's see, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, that's 5. So we could have found the answer by doing 6 minus 5, which of course is 1. Okay, so either way we get uh, the same answer. But we're going to practice using these rules over here. So I see subtraction here. Again, I'm going to use the quotient rule. We're going to be dividing these numbers. So this is equal to the log base 9 of 117 divided by 13. So it's 117 divided by 13. I believe that would be 9, right? What's 13 times 9? Let's see. Yeah, that's 117. So this is the log base 9 of 9. Okay, 117 divided by 13 is 9. And this is just equal to 1. 9 to the first power is equal to 1. Uh, it is equal to 9. So the answer is 1. Okay. All right. Subtraction again. Uh, we're going to use the quotient rule. You know what? Let's skip ahead and see if we can get a different kind of a problem here. Okay. So now we see ln, which means we're taking the natural log. So remember, even though the base is not written, whenever we're taking the natural log, the base is e. So this is the really the log base e of e to the 23rd minus the log base e of e to the 8th. 
So we will, since we see subtraction here, uh, we will be using the quotient rule. So this is equal to the, the log base E. That's what the natural log is, is a log base E of E to the 23rd divided by E to the 8th. Okay, so now we have to remember our rules for using uh, our laws of exponents, which says that if we're subtract, if we're dividing things uh, with the same base, the base is the same here, it's E, then we subtract the exponents. So 23 minus 8 is 15. So we have the log base E of, this would be E to the 15th power. Okay, so now we're asking the question, E to the power of what would give us E to the 15th power? Well, that would be 15. Okay, so there's our answer for that one. Okay, this one uh, would be the product rule. Um, I think we've seen problems like this before, so I'm going to skip ahead again. That's the exact same problem. You know, let's just, let's just do it. It seems to really want us to do this problem, so let's just do it. So we would use the product rule here. And we say that this is the log base 3 of 3 times 9. Isn't this the first problem that we did? I think it is. Okay, so that would be 3, right? Okay, here, here's a good problem. Okay. Again, we see addition here, so we're going to be using the product rule, and we're going to be multiplying the A and the B. The A here is Z to the 14th, the B is Z to the 6th. So we have, this is equal to the log base Z of Z to the 14th times Z to the 6th. Okay, so when we multiply, then remembering our laws of exponents, we would add the exponents here. So 14 plus 6 is 20. So now we're going to get the log uh, base z of z to the 20th power. So now we're asking ourselves z to what exponent is equal to z to the 20th? Well, that would be 20. z to the 20th power is equal to z to the 20th power. So our answer here is 20. Okay, let's say we, so far, we haven't used the power rule. I'm afraid to skip ahead too much because I don't want to skip one with the power rule. Um, okay, this is good. It doesn't tell us what the base is here. But remember, if, so you have to understand that if the base is not written, then it's understood that the base is 10. So let's just write that in. There's a 10 here. If you don't see a base, then it's 10. Unless, of course, it says LN, which we saw a few problems ago. Then the base would be E. But if it says log, L-O-G, and you don't see a base, then the base is 10. Okay, so, but we do see addition again, so we're using the product rule. Okay, so we're going to have the log base 10 of 5 times 20. Well, 5 times 20 is 100. So what's the log base 10 of 100, that would be 2, because 10 to the second power is equal to 100. 10 times 10 is 100. So our answer here is 2. Okay. Here, this is the log base E, okay, because we see ln over here, um, of E times e to the seventh. So since I see addition here, I'm using the product rule and I'm going to multiply the a and the b. Okay, so this is like e to the first times e to the seventh, and that would give us e to the eighth. Okay, just remember your laws of exponents. If you're multiplying, you add the exponents. So we're asking ourselves e to what power is e to the eighth? That would be eight. Okay, all right, we got a negative number here. Um, again, this is going to be the log base E of E to the negative second times E to the ninth 
Again, we're going to add the exponents here since we're multiplying, but you have to be careful because this is a negative. So negative two plus nine is positive seven. Think of a number line. I always, to this day, and I've been doing math a lot longer than you have most likely, to this day, I, I picture a number line in my head when, I, when I'm doing anything uh, addition or subtraction with negatives. And I imagine myself starting here at negative two and, and thinking, okay, where would I end up if I go nine spaces to the right since I'm adding? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I would end up at seven. Okay, so I would go two spaces this way to get to zero, and then I still have seven spaces more to go because it had to be nine spaces altogether. So I would end up at seven here. Um, all right, so where were we? So this is the log base e of e to the seventh power, which would give us seven. Okay, it still hasn't given us any power rule ones. I'm really looking for a power rule one. I think as soon as we get to a power rule, then, then we can stop. Um, this is very similar to the last few problems that we've done. We would be using the product rule. Okay, since we see addition over here, and then we would add these exponents, negative six plus negative four is like negative six minus four, that would give us negative 10. Okay, so the answer here would be negative 10. t to the negative 10th is equal to t to the negative 10. Okay, now here we have, we're going to have to use two rules, but that's all right. We see ln, so the base is e. Okay, so this is, this is, uh, well, let's, you know, let's just use uh, the product rule first, which means we're going to multiply these. Uh, so log base e of e to the second times e to the eighth. And then we still have minus the log base e of e to the third. Okay, so this is e to the tenth, since we would add the exponents over here minus the log of e to the third. And now we would use the quotient rule. Since we see subtraction over here, we would divide this and this. So this is the log base e of e to the 10th divided by e to the third. Okay, we would here subtract using the laws of exponents, we would subtract uh, these exponents here and write e to the seventh, okay? And then this would be seven, since e to the seventh is e to the seventh. Okay, um, so now we have a fraction over here. Don't get scared by fractions or negatives. We have both here. All right, so this is equal to the log base e of e to the one negative one half times e to the negative ninth. So I just used the product rule since I see addition over here. We're going to multiply this and this. Okay, we've done that a bunch of times already. So now you just have to remember that when you're multiplying, just going back to the laws of exponents, you need to add the exponents. So the only really the hardest part about this problem is not the logarithms. That's actually the easiest part of this problem. The hardest part of this problem is just adding two fractions together, especially when they're negative. So let's work that out um, down here. So we have negative one half plus negative nine. We can put the negative nine over one to turn that into a fraction. And then to get the denominators the same, we could multiply the numerator and denominator here by two, then, the, then this denominator would be the same as this one. So we would get negative one half plus negative, but plus negative is just like minus. So negative one half minus 18 halves, okay? And then we have, so the denominator would just be two. 
And now we have to think of what negative 1 minus 18 would be. And that would be negative 19. So we're going to get here the log base e of e to the negative 19 over 2. Or you could put the negative front negative in front and just say negative 19 over 2. Okay, and that would be our final answer, would just be the negative 19 over 2. Okay, so now we can actually use this fraction thing, but I'm going to hit negative first, and then 19 over 2. Okay. Um, Alright, good. So over here, see subtraction, we're going to use a quotient rule. So this would be the log base 9 of, now you got to be careful here, here's, here's where you're going to make your mistake for this one. You're going to do 81 divided by 3 instead of 3 divided by 81. The order does matter, okay? Subtraction and division, they are not commutative like addition and multiplication. So we're, we have to do 3 divided by 81, okay? It would be wrong to do it the other way around. Um, so let's see here. What's 81 divided by 3? 81 divided by 3 would be 27. So then 3 divided by 81, which is the reciprocal of that, would be 1 over 27. So we're going to get the log base 9 of 1 over 27. So now I have to ask ourselves, 9 to what exponent is equal to 1 over 27? Well, let's first ask an easier question, which is not equivalent to this question, but it, it'll lead us in the right direction. If this had just been 27 instead of 1 over 27, then we still would not be able to do it very easily, which is why you might have noticed I Put the, I paused the video, um, at least me making the video, and I wrote the change of base formula over here. Because 27 is not a power of 9. 9 to the first power is 9. 9 to the second power is um, already 81. So we're, we overshot 27 over here. Uh, to answer a problem like this, we would need to use the change of base formula. Okay, uh, so we need to, so this is equal to the log of some base of 27 over the log to some base, uh, to the same bases over here of 9. And now we would have to just think of a convenient number. So 27 and 9 are both powers of what number? That number would be 3. Okay, 27 is a power of... 3 and 9 is a power of 3. And these uh, logarithms can be evaluated easily. The log of 27 base 3 is 3 because 3 to the third power is 27. The log of 9 base 3 is 2 because 3 to the second power is equal to 9. So we get 3 over 2 here which is equal to 1.5. That is not the answer to this question though because this question said 1 over 27, not 27, but at least now we have a better idea of what we need to do. So we can write this as the log base 3 of 1 over 27 over the log base 3 of 9. And the only thing that's going to be different here is that... Uh, this is going to be a negative 3 instead of a positive 3. And this would still be a positive 2 down here. The denominators here are, are the same. Okay? But uh, this is 27, which we did before. This is 1 over 27. 3 to the negative third power is 1 over 27. To remember why, just remember your rules of exponents. 3 to the negative third power is the same as 1 over... 3 to the third power, which is 1 over 27. So we would get negative 3 over 2 here, which is negative 1.5.
Okay, so I didn't even realize that. So I guess you will have to use um, the change of base formula for a couple of problems. Um, what smart score am I at? I'm already up at a smart score. It was 70 something before, and that was the first change of base formula uh, problem that I that we saw. Okay, so anyway, ah, oh, now we have a power rule problem. Very good. Which means that I'll be able to end the video soon because I think we've seen just about every kind of trick that IXL is going to throw at us. Um, how do I know that the, that we're going to have to use the power rule over here? Because I see a coefficient over here in front of the log, which is, we have not seen before. But uh, that's really no problem. It's not that hard. So we're going to... So if we have some number b times the log of a, then that's the same as the log of a to the power of b. So this whole thing is going to, is the same as log of 160, this is just the same, uh, minus, now let's use the power rule, and let's rewrite this as the log of 2 to the 4th power, right? So we're just taking this coefficient and and using that as an exponent, okay? So that coefficient is now turned into an exponent over here. All right, so 2 to the 4th power, let's say 2, 4, 8, 16. So that's 16. So we have the log of 160 minus the log of 16. Now we can, since this is subtraction, we'll use the quotient rule. We'll do 160 divided by 16 uh, after the log, you know, inside this, of course. So the log of 160 divided by 16. 160 divided by 16 is 10. So we have the log of 10. Now, again, remember, we had one other problem like this earlier in the video, if you have watched the video all the way through. Uh, if you do not see the base, if you see log written here, but the base is not written, then we're talking about the common logarithm, which is the logarithm base 10. Okay, so it's sort of invisible and you can write it in. So what we're really talking about here is the log base 10 of 10 so that we also happen to coincidentally have a 10 over here so the log of 10 base 10 is just 1 because 10 to the first power is 10 so the answer here is 1 all right um we can do basically the same kind of thing we did before again we have a power rule example so this is going to be the the natural log of e to the seventh which is, you know what, which is really, when we say the natural log, we're talking about the log base e of e to the seventh minus the log base e of e, uh, e to the third to the second. You see what I did there is I used the power rule again, and I saw that there was a coefficient of two here, so I just used that coefficient as an exponent, okay? Turned it into an exponent. But th there was already an exponent over here, so this is looking a little bit messy. But now we have to remember our rules, our laws of exponents, uh, which is that if our power rule, but not for logarithms, our power rule for exponents says that we, if we have a power to a power, then we multiply those. So this is the same thing as e to the sixth power. So after all that, we have the log base e of e to the seventh power minus the log base e of e to the sixth power. Now we're going to use the quotient rule since we see subtraction. We're going to divide these things. e to the seventh divided by e to the sixth. Now back to laws of exponents. If we're dividing, then we would subtract the exponents. So this is, so seven minus six is one. So we would have the log base e of e to the first power. And the log base e of e to the first power is just 1. Okay? We've done problems similar to that. If we have the log base e of e to the something, then the answer is just that something. It's just the exponent over here. Okay. Um, this is another problem similar to what we did before. Um, this would be... Uh, plus 
right? Turn that coefficient into an exponent using the power rule over here. And then we, since we see addition here, that would be the product rule and we would be multiplying these things. But you know what? You might think, okay, five to the second power is um, 25 and then 25 times five is 125. So we could write this as the log base five of 125. But you know what, it's even easier if we just write this five to the second power times five as just five to the third power. And then we can easily see that the answer is gonna be three because five to the third power is five to the third power. All right, um, okay, let's do one more problem with a fraction because those are good to practice on. And, and then I think I'll, I'll end the video. Uh, you know what, I'll, I'll skip ahead one more level and then end the video. Okay, so we have, so we're gonna use the power rule, uh, the product rule over here and multiply these. But this is really whenever we see ln, that's the natural log, so that's log base e, okay, of e to the four thirds times e to the negative third. Okay, so the hard part here is going to be, since we're multiplying these things, just going back to the laws of exponents, we would need to add the exponents. So the hard part here is really just going to be adding with fractions. So we have to do 4 thirds plus negative 3. We can put the negative 3 over 1. Then to get the denominators the same, we can multiply this by 3 and then do the same thing in the numerator. So we now have 4 thirds plus negative, let's just say minus, okay, uh, 9 over 3. So the denominator is going to be 3, and then 4 minus 9, careful, it's not 9 minus 4, it's 4 minus 9, that would be negative 5. So this is going to be the log base e of e to the negative 5 thirds, which is negative 5 thirds. Okay. Um, all right, I th oh, let's do another one where we have to do sort of two things in a row. So we'll use the product rule here and we'll multiply these. So we'll get the log base 3 of 9. Okay, 3 times 3 is 9. Then minus log base 3 of 81. Now we use the quotient rule and we would divide 9 by 81. So we have the log base 3 of 9 over 81. You have to be careful, it's, eight, it's 9 divided by 81, it's not 81 divided by 9. Okay, so 81 divided by 9 would be 9, but 9 divided by 81 would be the reciprocal of that. It would be 1 over 9. So we're going to have the log base 3 of 1 over 9. Okay, now, I, I suggest when you have a fraction over here, just imagine what it would look like first as just a whole number, right? Not a fraction. If it was the log base 3 of 9, which it is not, but if it was, then that would be a pretty easy question. It would just be 2, right? 3 to the second power is 9. This is just going to be negative 2, since we have that fraction here, because 3 to the negative second power is 1 over 3 to the second power, which is 1 over 9. Okay, so it's just going to be the negative of whatever it would have been if this had been a whole number instead of a fraction. Okay, so we have negative 2 as our answer for this one. I think we've seen all the tricks it's going to throw at us. Oh, not quite. All right. So here's one trick we haven't seen yet. Okay. So I see a coefficient over here. So I'm going to use the power rule, turn that coefficient into an exponent. And we would get the log of 32 to the one fifth power plus the log of five. All right. Um, if we have something to the power of one 
fifth, then that's the same thing as taking the fifth root. We actually haven't talked about this in class yet. So we're going to talk about it now. So we're just asking here, uh, 32, uh, what number multiplied with itself five times is 32? That would be two. Two times two is four times two is eight, times two is 16, times two is uh, 32. So the fifth root, which means 32 to the power of one fifth of 32 is two, because two multiplied with itself five times is 32. Okay, so we're going to get over here that this is equal, to, this whole thing is this, is the log of two. Okay, and then we still have the log of five. Um, now we can use the product rule and we would multiply, since we see addition here, we're gonna use the product rule. We're gonna multiply these two things and we would get the log of 10. Again, if the base is not written and you see log here, then the base is 10. So I got another problem where the the base was not written and I had a 10 over here also coincidentally. Um, so the log of 10 base 10 is one. I think a bunch of these problems have, have had one as the answer. Okay, um, again, I'm gonna use the power rule over here. Write this as log to the log of 64 to the 1 6th power minus the log of 20. So I haven't done anything with this yet. Just keep it the same. So 64 to the power of 1 6th means the sixth root of 64. So what number multiplied with itself six times gives us 64? That would actually be two again. Two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64. If you multiply 2 with itself uh, 6 times, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, you would get 64. So this, again, is going to give us the log of 2, and then we still have the log of 20. Now we're going to use the quotient rule, since we see subtraction here. We're going to divide these. So we have now the log of 2 over 20. And careful, that says 2 divided by 20, not 20 divided by 2. 20 divided by 2 would be 10. 2 divided by 20 is 1 over 10. So this is the log of 1 tenth. And again, it didn't give us a base here. If you don't see a base, the base is 10. So now we're asking ourselves, 10 to what power is equal to 1 tenth? That would be negative 1. 10 to the negative first power is equal to 1 tenth. So our answer is negative one. That's a little different. So many of these answers have been one. All right, um, we've done problems like this before. So I think I'm going to end the video there and have a great day.